sign that someone is a good parent to their pet. They share a leash. They take your advice over Google they ask about when should they see a vet again they know their habits they prepare for unforeseen events, or try to, they treat them like a member of their family. Not a vet but common sense. They don't make their carnivorous pet a vegan. They are also dogs. Vet assistant here. Good owners usually do the following. 1. Pay for recommend tests and meds when the pet is sick. 2. Have a well-groomed and clean Yorkie, Shizu, Cocker Spaniel, Act 3. Stay up to date on preventative care, like vaccines and flea and heartworm prevention. 4. Follow the doctor's diet advice, not feeding grain-free, uneducated raw diets, or shit kibble. 5. Stay with their pet when it is euthanized. No animal should die without their beloved owner around. Not a vet but my vet mentioned once that he can tell by the condition of their coat. He said that my dog was well loved, cared for and petted often due to the smooth coat. Miss that doggy so much. They listen to you, instead of trying to convince you that what they read on Google is true. They can answer all your questions about what the pet eats slash where it sleeps slash what it does during the day. They don't try to humanize their pet by treating it like a baby. They understand first and foremost that it's a dog slash cat, not a person. They are genuinely happy. I will never not find people referring to themselves as their pet's parent weird. On the flip side, a person is generally a bad pet owner if, when frightened in the vet office, their pet goes to a staff member for comfort and reassurance instead of to their owner. They listen to you and don't argue with you about something they heard from somewhere they keep their pet clean they follow diet plan and I can see someone with their pet and instantly know whether they love their pet or not. It's all in the behavior, eyes and gestures. A good example of this would be Jenna Marbles. She cares for her pets like they are her kids. Until I read the comments I thought this was asking vegetarians of Reddit and I was really confused. Not a vet, but ours has complimented us many times on the way our dogs respond to being touched. From very early on, we wanted our dogs to be comfortable having their ears cleaned, teeth brushed, nails trimmed, being checked for ticks, groomed, etc. So we went through a nightly ritual of doing all these things, even if not needed, and as a result, our dogs are very easygoing and non-reactive to touch. Our vet has said that too many people do their dogs a disservice by not getting into these habits from the very beginning, when slash if possible, i.e. it's understood that if you rescue a dog, you may not be able to do this. My husband never loses his temper with our doggos and always has patience to rear them the correct way. He never has that patience for human beings lol. I'm a surgeon for both small animals and people, but if the pet has a good vibe and the owner stays in the room, talks to the pet, act, it's a good sign. Like people who don't care, usually leave the room and just ask how much is the bill. On the flip side, I'd like to talk about an amazing vet. Among many other things, she went in on her day off to treat my chinchilla when he was in pain and couldn't eat solid food. I will never go to another vet as long as she is practicing. I'll never forget, as an assistant, a big biker dude, tats, glasses, beard, sour expression the whole thing, kneeling down besides his cat who was getting his temperature checked, cupping its head in his hands and whispering oh baby, I know. Oh my little flower petal, I wouldn't like that too. Don't cry, it will be over soon. And I absolutely melted for him. Dude was scary to look at before that but after that I saw a whole different kind of person. Not a vet but a vet tech. Maybe a controversial one, but being ready to let go when the time comes. We see it all the time, pet parents who are too scared to say goodbye and keep paying for expensive treatments which can make a pet live longer, but doesn't improve their quality of life. I'm 100% behind putting up a fight and doing anything you can to save a pet's life, but living in pain is very hard and a lot to ask of an animal who can't accurately describe their pain to you. If there's one thing I've learned it's that some people love by hanging on, and others love by letting go. It's hard, but it's usually the right thing to do. Not my story but my mom's. 
She once had a small puppy come in and he was fat and when I mean fat I mean fat. It turns out the owner was grandma. Gotta love grandmas. Not a vet but an owner with a story. We adopted, Hobbs https colon slash slash imager.com slash a slash u7kcw, about seven years ago after finding him in our neighborhood. He was very friendly, purred like a chainsaw and was malnourished. We took him in and he became the best darned house cat ever, cuddly and sweet, got along great with our other cats. Just a big lovable goof. About five years ago I felt a lump near the base of his tail. We took him in to get it scanned and the vet described it as an iceberg tumor, what we felt was just the tip of a large mass intertwined throughout his hind quarters. We were devastated. I had several visits and calls with the vet to understand our options. Due to the size and location of the tumor, it was completely inoperable. Radiation and chemo are available but would require travel for Hobbs, he gets carsick very easily, and would make him miserable and sick, and wouldn't have any guarantees of success. The vet assured us that he was in no pain, and that it didn't seem to be having any effect on his mobility or anything. I finally asked what if we don't do anything? What if we just treat him like normal, let it run its course and let him be happy? The vet paused and said that's what I'd do if he was my cat. He assured me he thought we were taking good care of him. The tumor has gotten bigger but I'm happy to say Hobbs is still with us. He's got a small bit of a limp these days but he loves everyone he's ever met and acts like a dog, following us around and wanting tummy rubs. I know at some point the tumor will take him but until it does we're going to give him the best home we can. Being a responsible owner is completely relative to each situation. Yes, make your preventative care appointments on time and follow all vaccine slash diet slash annual recommendations. But also how you treat your pet, and your vet, in less routine checkups and sick visits says a lot. People can have all the money in the world and be terrible owners. On the other hand, the way people behave and make decisions in the face of financial limitations is also really telling. Owners that are willing to listen to me and make reasonable and informed decisions in the interest of their pet, even if we can't reach a gold standard plan, are good pet parents. You don't have to be a millionaire to be a good pet parent. Be nice to your vet and know that the health and well-being of your little buddy is always top priority. Not a vet but taxidermist here. Got to work on quite a few pets already and I can tell how well they were treated by their smell and all over skin condition. If you feed your pet garbage I will know, they will stink terribly even when fresh, recently deceased. Once worked on four rats from a very passionate owner who had lots of them. Just skinning them was unbearable, so pungent was the smell. Mites, rashes, at least one broken and crooked healed up bone. Not a vet, but we have had a sickly guinea pig and the vet has told us several times that with most other owners, she wouldn't still be with us. It's reassuring to know we are doing something right. Small animal veterinarian here. 1. A willingness to listen to, and gasp maybe even follow, the recommendations I make for care, especially for routine things like vaccines, individualized dietary needs, or preventative health. I can tell when owners think they know more than I do and don't bother trying to inform and educate some who are stuck in their ways. For example that feeding raw meat is superior to cooked, that vaccines do more harm than good, or that dogsnaturally.com is a reputable source of information. I love when my owners want to talk about health matters, if you have an open mind, I am a wealth of information. 2. Putting in the effort at home to care for your pet. Dogs and cats are not house ornaments. Both require socialization, interaction, some grooming, and attention. Not every pet is happy to come to see me, and I understand that, but if you don't pay attention to whether or not your pet is eating, or even what they are eating, never know what their stool looks like, and don't know what medications they are on, it makes my job a lot harder. Knowing these answers to the questions I ask shows you care. 3. Being willing to actually come see me and put in some effort when your pet is sick. Look, I'm sorry, guys. Medical care costs money. Treating your pet for free takes money away from the hospital and the people who work there. 
veterinarians aren't rich, and most clinics operate on thin margins. That being said, I will do everything I can to help within your individual limits, even if it's not the best approach medically. Yes, sometimes that means in the worst cases, euthanasia for a problem that is too costly to fix but would cause nothing but pain suffering if left untreated. I understand we all have limits, and you can be a great caregiver without endless disposable income. But if you expect me to magically fix your ailing pet with no exam, no diagnostics, and get angry that we have to charge for these things to keep our doors open, you lose sympathy in my eyes. In short, look after your pet's health, put in the effort to care for them, and try to listen to your doctor.